Thank you for the introduction, and uh, I'm very happy to be uh, invited to speak here. I will be giving the talk sitting down. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so, let me start with something classical before we get to the, to the real stuff. So, we're going to start with the Hunter and Call Stallings trace. Okay, so the starting point here is we have a discrete ring, and we take a finitely generated projective module over that ring. So, being finitely generated projective is equivalent to being a direct sum and in a finitely generated free module. So, so now the point is, so if you're, so in this direct sum decomposition, um, P is the image of some idempotent. Right? So there's some idempotent matrix, which is this P in the matrix ring, um, whose image is this direct sum map. And so the trace of the module P is the trace of this module. So you just sum over the diagonal elements. And for this to be well defined, you have to mod out the commutator ideal of the commutator subgroup of the ring. Okay, and so we can notice that. Okay, so you know, taking the trace of a matrix is additive over block uh, block sum of the matrices, and so therefore the trace of a direct sum is the sum of the traces. Now this is a workshop on K theory, and I just wrote down something which is additive on direct sums. So there's only one thing that's going to happen now, uh, which is that you're going to have a map out of K0. That's the shape here we Okay, so today's talk is going to be about uh, this map and sort of various ways of making the source and the target of this map more and more structured. So as there, you want to, be able to see more about uh, K theory, and then you make both K theory and uh, the source more, it's a complicated, but uh, see more of the structure of the ring. Okay. So, uh, here's a little overview. So, as I said, you want to promote, so here's a map of, of uh, we have a group homomorphism between abelian groups. And I want to promote this to a map between uh, real algebraic K theory and what's called real topological Hochschild homology. So these are uh, what are called genuine <coughs> much with variant spectra. I'll get more to that later, but that's somehow this is this is where we're going. And in particular for the talk today, uh, the goal is to calculate this, the target of this map. Okay? It's really hard to say something about the source, but we, we can actually calculate the target. And this is joint work with Emanuela Dotto, uh Irate Pachkoya, who is here in the audience, and uh, Suna Ale. And actually, a lot of the work that was done on this project uh, was done here at the Hausdorff Center last year. So we're very happy during this uh, during the trimester program. Very happy about that. Um, okay. And so, why why are we looking at all the structure? What's the motivation here? So, um, well, I'm going to give several motivations that sort of coming from different directions, but. Uh, so first of all, we'd like to calculate, uh, so the fixed points of KR is what's called protein bit space, or Hermitian K theory. So we hope to be able to actually make some new calculations of Hermitian K theory using these methods. Um, another thing we want to do is to say some, something about the evolution on A theory. So um, A theory has an evolution, as we about in Michel's talk on Tuesday. And the map, <coughs> uh, the map to K theory, to linear K theory, is, uh, is equivariant. So if we can understand the evolution on that, then maybe we can understand the evolution on A theory. And we also want to have an A theory version of this, of this KR. That's, that's not, we're not quite there. OK, and uh, lastly, uh, we want to be able to say something about the Novikov conjecture. So uh, there is, so Dr. who is one of my co-authors, and Herbert Ogle have recently um, made a reformulation of the Novikov conjecture in terms of properties of this map. This is on the Okay, so let's, <coughs> let's 
right there. Uh, so rings with anti-involution. So I said I wanted to to uh, study this this trace map sort of with more structure, where we're going to have a little bit more structure on the ring itself as well. So what is that? An anti-involution. So A is still a discrete ring. So an anti-involution on it is some map from the. So I write it as a map from the opposite ring uh, to A, which means that it reverses the order of multiplication. We write it as just putting a little bar. And so it reverses the order of multiplication, and if you do it twice, it's the end. Right, so that's the involution part. Okay, so two important examples. Um, so if the ring is commutative, you can just take the identity, uh, because A off is S morphic to A. And uh, but maybe the, the more interesting example is to take to take a group uh, and then take the involution induced on the group ring from the inverse. And if you want to think about something like the Noga token, then that's what it is. And this is also that I mentioned that so also when Hattori and Stallings were studying this in the first place, this was one of their primary examples for the to study the trace map. Okay, so so when you have this, so let's say we have P, let's say it's on the right uh, module over the ring. If you have an evolution, then there's also a right A module structure on the dual. So I'm going to write P star, this, this star is the dual. And uh, I'm going to write eta for this double dual identification. This is the usual double dual identification map. So you send an element to evaluation of that element. Okay. Um, now I can see that. So if you take the trace, so maybe an exercise to check that the item potent, which sort of corresponds to the dual, is the conjugate transpose of the item potent that corresponds to the module itself. And so you have that the, uh, the trace of the dual will be the trace of the conjugate transpose matrix. So now we're taking the trace, and that doesn't care about the, the transposition. That only sees the fact that it conjugated all the elements. And so then you get just a sum over all the conjugated guys, which is the conjugate of the trace. So what you can see here is that the, so first of all, P is isomorphic to P double dual, which means that Dualization induces an action of Zima 2 on K0. Right? So on, on the group and group, there's an action of Zima 2, which takes P to its dual. And there's also an action on the ring, and in particular on A, on the ring module of the commutator. And the trace map is equivariant for these actions. That's, so we're already here, we can see that the trace map on our C's, you know, the, C's or something is compatible with the, with the extra structures that exist on the ring, and this suggests that we should be able to, as we put more structure on these objects, somehow it should be possible to put the involution, or to keep the involution in that higher structure. Okay. okay so, uh, permission forms. So, permission K theory is the K theory of permission forms, so what are those? Um, so, Let's say a Hermitian form module is a pair. So it's a finitely generated projective module, and it's kind of like an inner product on that module. So it's a, a bi-additive map, P, and satisfies some, some conditions. So it's uh, anti-linear in one variable, linear in the other. It's when you reverse the order, uh, you conjugate. And there's an induced map from P the module itself into the dual of the module, which is just you know evaluated in one variable, and that map should be an isomorphism. Okay, so that's the last condition is called that is to say that the, the form is non-degenerate. And so we can immediately see that so we knew that the trace is equivariant. So the trace of the dual is the conjugate of the trace of the module itself. And here we have that the module is isomorphic to its dual. So it has the same the trace of P is the same as trace of P star. That means that the trace has to be a fixed point under the evolution. So again, we can see that the trace is incompatible. It just follows immediately from, from equivariance. Okay, so here are some examples. Um, if 
okay, is commutative and you take the identity to be the, the involution, then you get symmetric bilinear forms. And if, yeah, so then there's always, so regardless of whether A is commutative or not, there's always this, this particular form, which is called a hyperbolic form. It's a canonical example. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to write GW0 of A for the Grotenic group of these forms. So when you have two such form modules, you can take their sum. It's called the orthogonal sum. You just sum the underlying module, and you sort of take the, the block sum of the, of the forms. OK, so the GW stands for Grotendieck bit. Uh, let's see. So that was, now we've introduced, we have uh, K0, we have GW0. Uh, so these are just sort of the lower uh, algebraic K theory, and so here are the the higher stuff. So after Quillen, we, we have a definition of higher algebraic K theory as so you take your ring, you construct a certain space or spectrum, and then the algebraic K groups are the homotopy groups of that space. And uh, permission algebraic K theory, so studied by Pavlovi and Schlichting. Um, is well, you somehow kind of arises in a, in a similar way. You can construct a space, and the homotopy groups of that space are the higher uh, permission k groups. And these two spaces uh, are related in, in two ways, or in several ways. So there's the hyperbolic map. So I said that whenever you have a module, you get this sort of canonical model, which is the hyperbolic model. And that actually defines a map, a continuous map, from the, from the algebraic k theory space to the Hermitian k theory space. And there's a map going back, which is, so u is for underlying, which is the, the forgetful map. So you have a module that has a form on it, you can just forget the form. Now both of these maps are additive, so they, you know, they're, they're, they're compatible with, uh, with the addition, and therefore they induce uh, both maps in this. Okay, so I'm going to return to this, this extra structure later, but <coughs> it's important to know that it's there. Um, so, Hopsal homology. So, okay, so what we've done so far is we, take, we took the left hand side of the, uh, so we had this trace which was going from K0 into this quotient. We took the left hand side and we made it a lot more complicated. We somehow derived it. Okay, and so now, what about the, the other side? So, Beginning with work over Z. And so you can write this A model the commutator in a particular way. And uh, so here I when I write here that A slash Z, I mean that so it's just referring to the fact that the tensor product is over Z. It's not you're not modding on Z or anything like that. Okay. And so what you can do is you can derive the construction to so take derived tensor product uh, everywhere, and then you get some. I'm, gonna, I'm writing H H A here for let's say the chain complex that you get, uh, so, or maybe you could think of that by the double time correspondence. You can think of that as some kind of space. Okay. And to compute this, you can use a uh, simplicial resolution, which looks like this. And now, and the reason why I have a little bit. Yeah, so, so I've drawn here, this is level three of this chain complex, um, or of this uh, simplicial resolution. Uh, so at level n, you have n plus one tensor factors of the same uh, ring. And the face maps, you, so to understand what the, what the face maps are doing, you should think of your ring as being sort of distributed over a circle like this. And then the, the di, the i, trace map multiplies across the i intervals. You have two copies of a next to each other, you multiply them. Okay, and this, so the structure is responsible for the fact that uh, there's going to be, there, there will be a circle action, which also appears on Hochschild homology and later on topological Hochschild homology. That's not going to be the topic of the talk today, though. I'm just going to mention 
Okay, so I can try to Okay, so now we sort of derive the, the source uh, of the trace map, and we also derive the source of the target. And uh, Dennis, Dennis and the 70s constructed a map uh, from K-theory to this optional homology <coughs> space, which on pi zero still is the, uh, the usual trace map. Right? So it's a, some kind of a lift of, the, of this map that we had in groups to spaces. Okay, so on the next slide I'm going to talk about Hochschild homology and well, let's just jump into it. So it's basically the same thing, but now we work over the sphere spectrum instead of working over Z. This has a number of advantages. Uh, in particular, if you try to compute the Hochschild homology of Z over Z, then it's not going to be very interesting because all the tensor products we had before are just going to be z tensor over z with z and so on. So there's nothing interesting going on. But z as an algebra over the sphere spectrum is very interesting. So, so then if you input z for a as over here, that's actually going to be a very interesting object. And that's actually going to appear later today. We've made some computations of the real topological object on the z. OK, and so. Yeah, as you can see, this, this slide is basically the same as the one that I had before, except that whenever, wherever there was a Z, I put an S. And I also put a T in front of everything. So, and now Buxtet constructed uh, the trace, which goes from K-theory to topological Hochschild homology. So that's this, and we get out of this resolution. Um, and again, if you apply pi zero to this, you get the usual trace map that we had before. The map that was done It's the same. Okay, so we're going very fast today. Okay, so um, so I said that the source on the so we're going to turn out we have now a map between K-theory and THH. So these are spectra or, or infinite loop spaces, if you like. Uh, but now I want to take the involution into account, and I want to do this in a sort of maximally structured way. So there's a way to do that in equivariant homotopic theory, which is in the theory of uh, genuine Zima 2 equivariant spectra. So this works for any group, but it, it simplifies a lot for Zima 2, so I'm only going to present that case. OK, so. Present a slightly simplified picture. Um, so, what is so what Zima 2 equivariant spectrum in particular consists of the following data. Okay, so does this actually have a laser pointer? Yes, it's hot. Okay, so there's some spectrum X, ordinary spectrum, and there's an involution on this spectrum, that's the sigma. So sigma is an action of Zimachi. And then there is a spectrum which plays a role of the fixed points of x. It would just be the fixed points of x. And there's this map which I call REST, which is the inclusion of the fixed points into the uh, spectrum itself. OK, according to x. But then in addition to that, there's this map called the TUR. So TUR is not the trace, it's the transfer. So there's an additional map, which is the transfer. So if you think about this, so if I have an ordinary space, then I have most of this data, right? I have, sorry, I have an ordinary space with an action, Z mod 2. So I have some space with an action. I have a fixed point space, and I have the inclusion. But now, in addition, I have this transfer, and that's some, I mean, most Z mod 2 spaces do not have this. This is, this is some kind of, uh, I'll tell you that this is a very highly structured object. In particular, all of these maps that are written are also, in particular, infinite loop maps, so maps of spectra. So it's, it's, a, it's quite a, a lot of structure. Um, and uh, there is, so in addition to this, there's what's called the geometric fixed points. So this TR, this transfer map, behaves like a transfer should, so it factors over the orbits. 
And so in this particular, in this, since we're working in a spectra, that should be the homotopy orbits. So there's a map from the homotopy orbits into the fixed points, and you can take the cofiber of that map. So that's the geometric fixed points. So all of these ingredients are going to be important when we later study the trace map from real algebraic K theory to real KHH. So all of these components matter. OK, so let me give you an example of such a structure. So that is the sigma 2 equivariant sphere. Okay, so if you, right, so, so that's the sphere with, with the trivial action. So um, the action on S is just the identity. Um, and then the fixed points, rather than just being what one might expect, just the sphere itself, uh, it splits. So it has two copies, two, two things in it. And one is the sphere, which corresponds to the just the the geometric fixed point part. And then there's an additional up infinity showing. Okay, so I just wanted to show this just to say that even somehow the simplest spectrum, which would be maybe the sphere, is more complicated than you might expect. Okay. So another example. Uh, well, let me talk about real algebraic K theory. So real algebraic K theory is going to be is an example of, of such structure that we had on the previous slide. Um, which is sort of built out of permission K-theory and algebraic K-theory. Uh, so let me first just set the stage with uh, Atiyah's KR. So that's some other, the other real, the original real K-theory is due to, to Atiyah. And so what's that? So that's you take the spectrum KU, periodic KU, and you have periodic KO. So these are the entire spectrum and the, and the fixed points. And the, the action corresponds to complex conjugation. The uh, restriction map corresponds to complexifying uh, a vector bundle. So I mean, the map in the KO is like a stable vector bundle, and you can complexify it. The map path, the transfer, corresponds to restricting scalars along the map from R to C. OK? And here the geometric fixed points happen to be trivial. This is usually, usually this will not happen for spectra, but in this particular case it does. So here, for, for that to be true, it's important that we take the periodic versions of these theories, otherwise it's going to be wrong. Okay. Um, so real algebraic K theories you're going to present now is somehow analogous to this, and that's how it got its name. Why, why. So, so this is due to Hessenhoff and Massen. And we write it as KR of A. That's real algebraic K theory of A. And now A has to be a ring with anti-evolution. OK, and so what does it look like? Well, so it's algebraic K theory with an action of Zima 2. And the action is the one that sends P to its dual. As we saw before, that that's an action. Okay. And then the two maps that we had between uh, <laughs> and K theory are going to be the structure maps, the sort of the restriction and transfer in this uh, spectrum. Like so. And so the geometric fixed points are also very interesting. So there's a map from the geometric fixed points into L theory of A, so Ranitsky's symmetric L theory. Should put symmetric here. Oh, I did put some. So, and uh, the theorem by, by shifting which says that if one half is in the ring, so when one half is in the ring, the theory of, of uh, Hermitian form simplifies quite a lot. Um, I mean, it's still complicated, but it's just less complicated. Um, then this map is actually an equivalent. So maybe here I should say. <coughs> So the way I've presented it, maybe uh, these are somehow the connective versions of these theories, and then you should take a connective version of L theory. Take the connective part. Mm -hmm. But the theorem actually holds in greater yeah, yeah. the theorem holds in greater generality, but I haven't said anything about I'm not, I don't say anything today about non-connected KL. <coughs> That's all I'm saying. You think he said two of K or he said two of K? Oh, okay. mm -hmm. 
I'm confused. So here, this is phase two of this entire thing here. So it's the cofiber. You take K theory and you take the home entropy orbits on that, and that maps into here. And the cofiber that maps into L theory, and that happens to be in the total mass of one half. What is KR? So KR is this entire structure. Just so, so I think it was the amount of grand spectrum as somehow this this diagram with all its coherences and so on. And I should have made that. Mistake. And so, okay, so now I have this nice uh, theory for the source of the trace. We will have a great theory. And we would like to have something uh, in the target that, so that we can see you know, all, this, all this nice structure that we have on the left hand side should be reflected in some nice structure on the right hand side. There should be some diagram like that go on the end. Okay, so. So I'm going to put a Zeeman 2 action on, so we have this simplicial resolution, um, which was the thing that gave us uh, uh, THH. And so there's a, you can put an evolution on this thing. And it's, it maybe it looks slightly strange to you. I'll try to explain uh, in the picture maybe why this happens. Um, so we use the, the evolution, and we also reverse the order. And it's important that we because the anti-evolution reverses the order of multiplication, we have to reverse the order of the tensor factors, otherwise it's not going to make sense. So this, this idea, this is, this is what's called the dihedral bar construction, this is not due to us, this is, this is old. I mean, this goes back to, uh, I'm sure, at least the day, uh, I mean, the people who define partial homology and cyclic, and cyclic homology. Um, this has been used, used before and so on. What's new for us is the fact that we use it in the context of genuine Zima 2 equivariant homotopy theory. So I'm not claiming any originality for that, just, just, just the way that we implement this in that particular context. Isn't it? Okay. Um, and the geometric realization is THR of A, so which is real THH. Okay. So you can, if you're like to, if you're good at thinking about simplicial identities, you can see that this map actually does not is not simplicial. Um, it somehow, when you, uh, well, yeah, I say. The map is not simplicial, but it's enough to get an action of Zima 2 on the geometric realization. Or you can you can take a, a subdivision of the simplicial object and then it will actually be simplicial. That's another way to say it. Okay. So anyway, um, there is a real trace. So there's a trace map from this KR into THR, which refines so we have this map from K theory into THH, and this uh, is an equivariant refinement of that map. So what is the other data? I mean, you had, I mean, now you just define some of the, the upper part of your diagram. Yes. The physical yes. So to give an, in, we don't really have an intrinsic description of what happens at the fixed points. I mean, we can, we can, can the way we model these things is actually not with these kind of spectral Mackey functor diagrams, but instead with uh, orthogonal spectra. So it's like a spectrum with an actual action of Zima two, and then to get what lives in that place, you just take the fixed points. So what we'll uh, show you later is that we do have an intrinsic description of the geometric fixed points. So that's somehow I'm not... <coughs> it, it, I don't think there is any intrinsic description of the, of the actual fixed points, but, but of the geometric fixed points. Okay, so for some results. So the first thing uh, one might want to apply this to, which is somehow one of the most interesting cases for all of this stuff, is group rings. Okay. So you take A 
here you can really work with any range spectrum with involution, but you know, if you don't like to think about that, just take a, keep, keep A being a ring, that's fine. Just a discrete ring. And uh, we take, again, G has the action or involution, which sends G to its inverse. Okay. And so then uh, we were able to prove that um, when you take the real THH of the group ring, then this sort of uh, splits into two parts. So this is this is a um, again a equivalent refinement or lifting of a of a map. So this is a well-known theorem for ordinary THH, and the new thing here is that it somehow remains true with all of this genuine equivariant structure in place. Um, so what, let me say a little bit about what the right-hand side is. So, um, if you forget about the actions of Zima 2 and everything, then on the right-hand side you have THH of A smashed with the free loop space of BG. So that's the space of maps, unbased maps from S1 into BG. BG is a classifying space of the group. But now if you want to think about what the action does, then because of this simplicial resolution that you have, we had before, that somehow forces the action in, in this uh, uh, on the right hand side to be okay. So, so when I write L sigma, I mean you take the so sigma is supposed to mean sine, so sine representation. You take the sine representation of zima two, and you take its one point compactification. So then you get a circle like this, where the action flips. It's like a circle which is <coughs> by a group, and this has two fixed points, which is zero and infinity. Okay, so that the fixed point set is an S. Okay, so and there's a similar axon on BG. I have an action. So BG is you can construct as the bar construction. So the bar construction for the group, and there's an action on this which. So what's what's n simplex has some tuple of length n of group elements, and the action flips that tuple and takes the inverse of it. So if it's you want to take you want to take inverses, and then that reverses the order of multiplication, and therefore you have to flip the order of them. And that's somehow so okay, so we have a map, so we have this space of maps from the S1, free loop space, to PG, and you take the conjugation action. I told you how to act on the source and how to act on the target. So this is that's what I mean by this this right hand side. Okay. And so I uh, have so uh, Amelia Herringham proved this for the sphere when A is the sphere spectrum and we generalize this to, to any ring spectrum of anti evolution. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, maybe the most canonical group is group of integers. And and then you get the splitting. So that's this is basically just a master computation of what, what that right hand thing is. And here note that so on the S1 on the right here, the action of Z12 is trivial. There's no action. And uh, the action on Z is by inversion. So it goes to N goes to minus N. So it's lots of copies of the circle next to each other and you that's it. Okay. Um, so that's a sample, and the corollary is that. So this again comes out of analyzing the homotopy type of this of this loop space, um, and in particular analyzing its fixed points. So its fixed points somehow have to do with the elements of the group whose square is a unit, and uh, so if the only such element, so if the only two torsion element is um, the unit element, then you get this nice formula for the geometric fixed points. So, you know, just what I'm doing here is I'm basically applying the geometric fixed point functor to to this thing, and that the geometric fixed point functor distributes over over the two factors, and then under this condition, the geometric fixed points here will just be BG itself. <coughs> So, but when 
When this condition is not satisfied, then this is significantly more complicated. You get new factors. Okay. So here's some more incoherent homotopy theory. Um, so there's a norm, a multiplicative norm on, on spectrum. So if I have a spectrum A, I can take its norm. So you should think of that as that's you tensor the thing with itself. And the group zima 2 acts by flipping the two factors. So this is somehow not OK. This is a fine idea. The point is this is implemented in genuine equivariant homotopy theory in such a way that the geometric fixed points just gives you the ring with the uh, thing back, uh, gives you A back. Okay. So that's, um, uh, I believe this actually. So the norm is also monoidal, and I believe that those properties actually sort of characterize it. Okay. So, and if A is a ring, then the norm will also be a ring. Okay. So we're going to use this to give a description of uh, real topological Hausdorff model. Okay, so here's the, the theorem. So this is now an equivalence of genuine sigma 2 equivariant spectrum. And so if you recall, probably you don't from before, but uh, THH, you could write that as A tensor over the enveloping algebra, so A tensor A op, with A, and here we're using that, so A op is as much as A, and we can think of this norm as some genuine equivariant refinement of, of the enveloping algebra. Okay, and now this, this is somehow the outset for most of the so most of the theorems to come really rely, sort of have this as their starting point. In particular, this has a very nice consequence. So this is this is how we get the intrinsic description of the uh, of the geometric fixed points of THR. So that's the corollary is uh, we get this, <coughs> and now again, so this phi under phi distributes over the tensor product. So what you do, I mean, to get this formula, you basically just apply this upstairs, and then you're applying it here, and then it goes inside here, like gives you this, the same here, and then we have this formula up here that the geometric fixed points of the norm are just A itself. So that's how we get this. A. Okay. So why is this good? It's good because here, so this norm and the enveloping algebra and so on, these are pretty complicated things. It's usually quite difficult to work with. But here it's just A itself. And so what goes as long as you can understand this guy and the module structures, you can re you really have a shot at computing what this is. And that's more exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so the A has a triple No, here A so A is a uh, It's also a genuine. Yes. So A is a so there's a okay, I should, I should probably should have mentioned this. So you have a ring, discrete ring with anti evolution. It has an abnormal plane spectrum, which is also a ring spectrum with anti evolution. And there's a way to, not a way to make that into a, one of these sort of genuine equivariant spectra and so on, so that it actually makes sense to take the, these statements. And so, you know, uh, let's say, why, why would one be interested in this? Um, so we have this trace map from KR into THR, and instead of the, um, Geometric fixed points on the KR side are closely related to symmetric L theory. And so one can hope that to get some kind of connection, or one does get some kind of connection now between this geometric fixed points of THR and, and L theory. And that's actually, so in this work of Dr. Ogle on, on reformulating the Novikov conjecture, that's exactly what they do. Uh, okay, so here are some computations. Uh, of the geometric fixed points. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the formula that I have on the previous one. Okay, so the first one is somehow easy, but also a little bit disappointing. Um, so if you input z one half, which is somehow the, the most yeah well, one of the one of the easiest things, um, then the output is is, is trivial. 
And the reason for that is that the geometric fix, so we have this formula with the geometric fixed points of the ring, and the geometric fixed points there are, are themselves trivial, and so everything just collapses. <coughs> so, and this has some even more drastic consequences because, so if A is any ring, which, were, which has one half in it, then it's an algebra over Z one half. But that means that the real THH of that ring will be an algebra over the real THH of Z one half. And so therefore it follows that the geometric fixed points of that ring will also be, be zero because it's a module over something which is zero. Okay, so that, this is a bit disappointing because you know, many of the rings that we somehow already know, something about the permission real character of half one half in them. So somehow maybe but sometimes that's how it is. Um, and so we can compute it for FP. Again, just using the formula, it's, it's completely straightforward to use the, the formula for this. And so the first part here, that this is zero, so, you know, well, if P is not two, then two is an invertible in, in FP, and so we get the top here, it just, just follows from this. And the second one, well, it just follows from, people have computed what the geometric fixed bunch of A, and so HFP are, or sorry, HFP. Um, okay. And so maybe more interestingly is, so you know we should think about now the things where 2 is not invertible because otherwise it's not going to be very interesting. Um, and we can compute it for z. So this is one of the results that we're very happy about. Um, and again, yeah, so here we actually we needed some rather strong input. We needed some input from from the, uh, the latest uh, Nikolaus Scholze paper about the HF2 module structure of the algebra structure of the geometric fixed point of points of H Z to be able to make this computation. So somehow, just just instantly, can we actually uh, calculate this? Okay. So again, so here, so because we haven't inverted two, uh, we get this, and this is so on where there is now this connection between the geometric fixed points of K, R, and Z, and this thing. So you know, something for one of the questions that we want to answer is, what is the relation between this and symmetric L theory of the integers? We, we don't know this, but there should be, there should definitely be some connection. Okay, so next I want to say a little bit more about THR of FP. Uh, so let me begin by just recalling what we know about the non-equivariant case. So Webster in the 80s he computed that uh, so THH of FP, so no, no real anything here. THH of FP is so additively, that's just as a, you know, okay, it's a ring spectrum, but just additively it splits as a wedge of algorithm of Planck spectrum. And the ring structure, what well, you can see in the homotopy groups, is that it's polynomial. It's polynomial and a variable in degree two. So maybe you could say that as an associative algebra, it's it's a tensor algebra in a class of um, So now we have some pieces to work with. So on the previous slide, we saw that we can calculate the geometric fixed points of THR of FP. And here we know what the underlying homotopy type is. So combining those two things, um, you get the following theorem. Um, so, so this x, this x is the generator in degree two. So a generator in degree two in homotopy groups, that's the same as a map from S2 into your, into your. Okay, now I claim that the, so it turns out that this, this x is actually lifted to an equivariant map from what I'm calling S rho, which is take the regular representation of the group, that's one copy of the trivial representation plus the sign representation, and you take its one point compactification. So you, you can take, so it's basically CP1 with complex conjugation. Okay, so from that, so this, yeah. so this map from S2, it refines to an equivariant map from, from this particular sphere with an action 
into real DHH. And there's a corresponding theorem now that um, uh, this is a kind of like a tensor algebra. As an associative algebra, it's, it's a tensor algebra on, on this particular class. <coughs> okay. And so the last thing I want to say something about is the real THH of Z. Uh, so I put root towards the real THH of Z because we haven't been able to compute the whole homotopy type yet. Um, this is um, Two is not inversal here, so it's, it's more complicated. OK, so again, the, the starting point for, for what we can say is Bextet's calculations uh, from the 80s. So he computed this. that So THH of Z, it splits. So there's a copy of HZ in degree 0. And in every odd degree, there's a copy of Z mod n. And if you look at the homotopy, so this is this is also a ring spectrum, but somehow in a kind of at least the homotopy ring is very boring. So you take the homotopy groups that gives you a graded ring. But now for degree reasons, so if you multiply two things in degree zero, that's just the multiplication in z. But if you take things in positive degree, and so you have something in odd degree and you have something in odd degree, and you multiply <coughs> two things, then you get something in even degree. But in even degree, there's nothing. And so that means that the multiplication is actually trivial in positive degrees. So the multiplication map is zero. Uh, so this is a little bit disappointing. And this is actually one of the reasons why we haven't been able to, to get so far with the calculations here. So nevertheless, uh, we have showed that if you invert 2, which was somehow the non-interesting case in terms of geometric fixed points, we, are actually, we could actually show the following. So we have basically the same splitting uh, as above. And now, somehow, we believe somehow for the same reason as this row <coughs> showing up in the previous uh, in the case of fp, it's also showing up here. So here we have 2n minus 1. So this is some 2n minus 1 dimensional sphere. And, well, which one is it? I mean, you know, we have to put some zima 2 action on it to specify that. And it turns out that the one that works is if you take n times the regular representation minus the trivial representation. Okay, now here, and here I just mean you take the take z mod n and you kill the two primary. Okay, um, but all is not lost. I mean, I said we we had a couple of slides ago. We had the geometric fixed points of thr of z. So we do know something, right? We know, we do know that, and so from that and and this we're able to piece together that. So if you take the the fixed points. The, the thing I said, we don't have a we don't have an intrinsic description of it, but I mean it's it's still there. Okay, so you take the fixed points and you take its pi two. So this thing is going to be a ring that follows because z is a ring, then z is a commutative ring, then thr is, is also a ring. And so first of all, this is axiomorphic to z mod two, and so it's not going to be visible in this calculation, but but it's axiomorphic to z mod two. And I said it's a ring, and it turns out that this element. And the fixed points has infinite multiplicative order. So somehow the, the fixed points of the th r of z behave quite differently from the uh, from these. Uh, at least point of varying is very different. Here the all the multiplications are at zero, and here we have an element of infinite order. So there's something going on, and maybe we hope, hope maybe we can use this infinite order element to sort of reach higher and higher up into the ring and try to figure out what it is. Okay, so that, that's all I had. Thank you. For questions? Is there something about the Nobikov conjecture? Um, so there is a paper, I mean, so. Uh, that's at one of my co-authors, Emanuele Dotto and, and Craig and Ogle. They're, they have a paper on the archive recently about... Uh, so you, what you want to show is that the assembly map in L theory is rationally injective. And they're able to show, to somehow reformulate this in terms of um, just this, 
this map uh, from KR to, uh, to THR, or at least what happens on geometric fixed points there, is rational. And for that, the input, so the input is more complicated than just uh, an ordinary ring with involution. It's what they call a permission Mackey functor. So it's somehow, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not an author on the paper, so I can't really, sort of, like, uh, it's not all in my head, but. Uh, It goes a little bit beyond, so it somehow it uses Hermitian K-theory and so on, but it's using something new, which is this Hermitian Mackey functor, which is a slightly more general thing than a ring with anti -involution. And In the particular, it, it allows you to have more interesting geometric fixed points than, than what you will get. Um, yes? Uh, can you describe explicitly what the map is from L theory to uh, geometric fixed points? Um, it's the other way around, from geometric fixed points to L theory. So it's the. So, uh, because from geometric fixed points of KR to geometric fixed points of uh, THR. Oh, there, ah. In Pinot. In Pinot, yes. So oh, I should have uh, yeah, that was a mistake. I should have mentioned this. So the geometric fixed points of KR, you take pi zero of that, you get the bit. This is just a classical victory. Yes. So classical victory, and so there's a map on the classical victory which is um, a zero of the geometric expense of THR. And it's I, I don't have a I mean you can somehow trace through and see in a certain sense what it does, but it's it's not entirely clear to me what it's always doing. I mean somehow I, I don't have a general formula, which is, or at least yeah. not a formula which is enlightening in any way. Yeah. If you, but you know in the case of Z, right? yeah. So in the case of Z, it's taking the rank mod two. So on the the source, it's it's Z mod two or F two, and the target is Z, and the math is the rank mod two map. I mean, exactly. There's only one thing you could possibly do. Uh, so one case where it's actually much more interesting is if you take. Uh, it gives a group ring where uh, the group has elements of, of order 2. Because then it's somehow picking up, so for each element of order 2, you get a um, permission form on the group ring itself. You take the inner product, which is like you send A comma B to A times this element of order 2 times B conjugate. So that's a permission form on the group ring. And the, this map from the geometric fixed points of KR to geometric fixed points of THR really detects these elements. So these are really, there's a the Z mod 2 in the target for every one of these elements or 2, and, and these are all detected by that map. Do you have a real version of the batch spectral sequence actually calculating? No. So that's, a, that's actually a problem. Um, we don't have, I mean, Okay, so for the to use the Buxton spectral sequence, you need that when you take HFP of the tensor product, you know, it splits as a as a tensor product of the, of the factors, and, and we just don't have that. Uh, so you would have to have a spectral sequence to even somehow do the, yeah, you get an extra extra layer of spectral sequences to, to get this. We have, so maybe one can do this, but we haven't. So far, our methods have been using the fact that if you have a map of Zima two spectra, which is an equivalence on the underlying spectrum and on the geometric fixed points, then it's, then it's an equivalence. And so, uh, because we have a formula for the geometric fixed points, we can actually calculate what they are. But, but uh, we, no, we, have, we don't have Probably one can do something, but we actually haven't done it. But there is this Mickey 4 spectral sequence. Yes. Is, that is quite difficult. Yes. Well, you can compute pi 0, pi 1, if you want to go higher. That's from the description as a template for her. Right, right. Always possible. Yeah. There is an obvious question that in case that you have the gentile character to CP homology, I believe here it can be the same with uh, taking into account the evolution. You get the map <coughs> to some kind of variable. Yes, so there is. So I didn't uh, talk about this in this talk, but there is a, there is a real version of 
So THH has a cyclotomic structure and has all kinds of yes. And there's a there is a Zima two equivariant version of that, of a real cyclotomic structure. And there is actually so so there is some kind of a actually this map from K theory to from real K theory to THR factors through something which one could call TCR. One, one, one does call it TCR. And um, so you do get some some map from for instance from uh, Hermitian K theory into some kind of dihedral topological dihedral homology. Uh, this hasn't been calculated yet. We don't know. We don't really know so much about this map, but we know that it exists. Oh. Let me say something. Yeah. The, we have, I mean, all the functional dihedral homology. This yeah. Up here just this guy, and the tensor will be vanished on this year. Yeah. So, what happens in in the TC case? So I believe is that right, is that for all coefficients or only rational? Rational. Yes. So rationally, that's yes. But you there is so exactly. So now this and this is a model. I mean, in this this theory really after you even invert two, there's really somehow you lose a lot of the information that you would like to have about L theory. So somehow that I would say that that's maybe compatible somehow. Okay, but this object. So that's. Well, you should ask uh, Dr. I mean, Ogle about this. This is not in that case. You know, the, the, the input there, pulling in there, is this Hermitian making factor we mentioned. And there, like even rationally, the metric fixed points don't have to vanish. That's true. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's the main point. I mean, now we also want to say this is not Dr. by Michael, I think that you said that uh, correctly, this map should be of your metric fixed points and map from what's called symmetric activity to normal activity, as you do TC. And so this is certainly not trivial always. Other questions? It's also case. So I think the speaker again.